Let's talk to Ricardo. He is from Active Trades. Ricardo, very good morning to you. Good morning. Okay. On my mind, I'm reading about Italy at the moment, and I've seen some spikes in the, um, the yield curve. Um, how worried should I be as an investor? Um, according to most observers, probably not that much. And this morning on the train, as I was coming in, I was reading about a, a Reuters survey on the, on the outlook for the euro in 2019. And uh, most people agree that the outlook is quite positive. Um, so this leads me to think that the consensus out there is more on the side of uh, all these issues that are um, troubling the euro and, and, uh, and consuming the investors with, uh, with worries uh, will fizzle out. So um, Italian uh, budget um, should hopefully uh, come to some sort of resolution this issue uh, probably not for 2019 but there will probably be an agreement to uh, reduce the the deficit the public spending deficit to two percent or even below for 2020 and 2021 and that should calm uh, things down um, the other big issue as well uh, in europe of course is uh, brexit and, uh, and the impact it may have, not just on the UK side, but also on the European side. And at the moment, uh, although it doesn't look very promising in terms of a favourable outcome, once again, most people out there that uh, are, uh, sort of have a good insight into what really is going on behind the curtains uh, believe that there will be some sort of deal. I think the most pessimistic um, view uh, relates to roughly 25% chance of a no-deal Brexit. So um, once, once these, uh, these worries dissipate, uh, it's quite likely that we will see a resurgence of the euro and, uh, and uh, investors' interest will be renewed and, uh, and potentially even uh, we could see a complete reversal of fortunes between the euro and the dollar towards the end of next year. Um, because uh, it's quite likely that by then the ECB will start uh, tightening the monetary policy. Yep. Uh, the US situation at the moment uh, is extremely positive. However, uh, they've, uh, they didn't keep any powder dry should, should things start to go south. Uh, so imagine a situation where um, inflation all of a sudden starts uh, becoming a concern, uh, the Fed will have to further accelerate the pace of interest rate rises. Uh, this may lead to um, a slowdown in growth yep. or even uh, a standstill, a small, a, small, a small period without growth. And if we combine this with a, with a more um, optimistic outlook on the Eurozone and, and better conditions in the Eurozone, we could see a, a reverse in the flows. and. Uh, and the euro uh, potentially. Well, two big themes coming up. We've got the midterm elections in the US, okay, and we've got the price of oil, the sanction with Iran, I think, November the 4th, okay. Now, hedge funds are meant to be betting for $100 for, for crude oil sooner rather than later, mm -hmm. okay. The last time we had the crisis in 08, where it was 147 bucks, I think, mm -hmm. um, they, that basically slowed global growth down mm. okay are people are people worrying about that i'm worried about the price of oil um, and the knock-on effects i think yes uh, i mean some countries will for sure be worried about it for example emerging economies that uh, that import oil uh, will be worrying but i think one one crucial change that occurred between the last time when dollar was at 147 and um, uh, oil was at 147 dollars yep. a barrel and now is that today the US are actually net producers of oil, so they, they now produce more than what they import. So the impact in the American economy, the net impact of, of higher oil prices is actually positive, which is a big change from what it used to be. So um, even, though, even though President Trump has been um, talking about uh, his concerns regarding the, the price of oil and uh, and uh, going about it in an hilarious <laughs> way, the way he, he talked about the king of Saudi Arabia, said king, <laughs> which was very funny. 
Uh, but I think, I think uh, that the wider economy um, probably will not su suffer as much, at least in the US, uh, as, it, as it did previously. So, uh, I, I mean, it depends what sort of investor you are and where you're, and where you're located and, and what, what, what assets. Well, we talked about India briefly being, that's a net importer of oil, yes. okay, and the rupee, you know, these emerging markets, we've seen Venezuela, we've seen um, Turkey, yes. okay, you know, this, this could have serious implications, couldn't it? Uh, it, it? It could, it could, for sure. So, so Venezuela, Venezuela's oil production uh, is seriously re reduced from what it used to be, mainly due to a lack of investment in, infra in infrastructure. Uh, you talked about India, and, and it's interesting that India is maintaining a good relationship with Iran at the moment, and they're yep. still buying uh, Iranian crude, so they may suffer, but perhaps they will look for alternative ways. Um, I think one of the main concerns uh, as far as the oil industry uh, can look ahead and, and, and think, oh, um, should we be worried about this? They should be worried, uh, perhaps, in the sense that uh, such high oil prices would make it very attractive for some of these countries to start investing heavily in alternative sources, so in renewables, uh, for example. And, uh, and this could become a concern, and we, we could change, we could see a massive change in paradigm, for example, in India. And uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're a huge, huge economy. And when you have so many uh, consumers and so many people to, uh, to look after, um, yes, it is a concern that oil prices are high, but also is a concern for the producers that, that such a massive country will, will switch from oil to something else. All right. Finally, I've got to ask, what's high conviction at the moment into the end of the year in terms of currency pairs? Anything? Um, well, um, it's... It's, it's very controversial, but uh, I, I like, I like some, uh, some stories I've been hearing out there about a, a more positive outlook for the euro, so um, a reverse in fortunes, something along the lines of what I was um, touching on earlier, but, uh, but in, the, in the shorter term. So okay. the euro could potentially, should this Italy situation be resolved, could potentially um, gain as well from some uh, some uh, unexpected uh, results in the American midterm election. So, if uh, if uh, the Republicans are to lose um, this election and the Democrats yep. gain control of the houses, uh, we could see an, an impact in the markets there, and then combined with a, with a clearer situation on the European side, that could start the the reversal, although it's not very clear. Well, on that note, I'm going to add on the technicals, it looks like an inverse head and shoulders pattern, which is bullish for the euro. Yes. Ricardo, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Nick.